Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas, and this video is going to show you how you can repurpose your Lesson 6 uh, sheet here to find center on several different objects. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to find center on a tile, canvas, rock, and coffee mug uh, very quickly and easily without having to get out a ruler or a compass or anything else. Um, what you're going to want to do is get a small sharp object I'm going to go ahead and use one of my old micro drill bits that I used to use before I designed my tools. And I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole in the white dot in the center of lesson six. And I've actually already done this, but I'm going to go ahead and simulate punching a hole through the center there. And let me get this a little closer so you can get an idea about how big it is. Um, right there in the center dot. And you're ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the four, four inch square ceramic tile. It's about the same size as the lesson sheet and I think it's a good starting point. And what I do is I just lay it on there to where it looks like I have about the same amount of area all the way around, which isn't very much. And I just hold on to it with one hand. And I take my number one, number one tool here and I'm gonna go ahead, for this demonstration, I'm going to just use white paint for all of them. I recommend using whatever color you're going to paint your center dot uh, to do this. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and use white. And you don't need very much paint on there. You're just marking a very small center. Um, you can see about how much paint I have on there, and that's plenty of paint. You don't even need that much, but um, then I'm just going to go ahead and Take one more look, make sure everything looks pretty centered. And just going to poke through that little hole there. And you wanna peel this off, you don't wanna slide it because then you'll, sl you'll smear the paint on the surface of your uh, item you're gonna paint. And it's not a very big spot, but you don't need one very big. That's just to help you uh, locate center. And so that's how you do a tile. And I'm actually gonna do a little bonus here in the middle of this. Uh, something I've been using recently uh, to wipe my tools off with while I'm painting and it's this right here. Baby wipes. And Cheryl from Linwood Rocks is the one that uh, showed me about using these things and I really enjoy using them because they stay damp for a nice amount of time. They're not too wet, not too dry. They have a pleasant smell. They're inexpensive and uh, I got this one at Walmart with the plastic container and then you can go ahead and, and reuse a plastic container with uh, refills. So I wanted to give you that little extra bonus tip in this video and uh, I hope you give them a try and I think you'll enjoy using them. I know I sure do. And now let's go ahead and, and uh, paint some center dots on uh, a few more items. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is going to be um, a canvas and it's just a little I think it's a three inch square canvas. So it's a little bit smaller than the lesson sheet. And so you can't really tell where to line it up this way. So what you wanna do, flip it over. And you just wanna kinda eyeball this to where you see about the same amount of overhang from the lesson sheet on all four sides of your canvas. And you wanna hang on to that pretty firmly. You don't want it to slide around. That's the important part, you don't want it to move. And I'm gonna go ahead and dip my number one tool in the paint. And I'm just gonna poke with the center hole there. I'm gonna be sure to peel this off because I don't wanna smear the paint. And there's my center dot. And I know that you see a lot of times where people draw a lot of lines out using templates, but uh, I like to teach freehand dot mandalas. Um, it's another option where you don't need to draw all the guidelines out. Um, I like to use visualizations um, and utilize the previous circle of dots to give me the guidance on how to continue my, my patterns. Um, I kind of feel like I have my templates in my head for all the patterns that I do. I think there are some patterns where you're going to need a template, but uh, very seldom in my opinion. And uh, that's just been my experience and that's why I like to, I like to teach the freehand style because I think it's uh, you get right to painting versus having to do all that additional prep work and I've been happy with the results. So 
anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do a unsymmetrical object, this rock here. And there's a little more wiggle room here as far as uh, getting perfectly dead center because this isn't perfectly round or perfectly square. It's just kind of a um, odd shape. And so you're just going to do a little more guesswork on this one. And it's the same concept as the since the rock is smaller than the lesson sheet, you flip it back over again. And this side here is actually um, flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the side I'm going to be doing my dotting on. So I'm going to put that face against the, the lesson sheet and try to get about the same amount of paper all the way around on this here. And, and then once I feel like I got it pretty close, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to try to be careful not to let the lesson sheet slide around. It's a little more challenging with something like this, but you just got to take your time and not be in too big of a rush when you're doing this step here. And it's the same process, a little bit of white paint on the number one tool, poke through the hole in the middle, not slide it. It's a pretty small white dot. It's right there. And I'd say that's close enough to center because this is not perfect. So they're um, I don't know if there really is a perfect center on that. And one more thing I want to do is a different shaped item, and that is a coffee mug. And since this lesson sheet is flexible, it's cardstock, uh, the one that you get in the kit, um, or whatever you use to print on, you're probably going to be printing on some sort of a paper. Um, so it's going to be flexible, and you're going to be able to have it conform to the shape of the mug. And the nice thing is, I think that this size fits pretty nicely in a lot of coffee mugs. This is a little bit bigger coffee mug than most, but even on the ones that are a little bit smaller, I find, um, in fact, I have a white mug that's a little bit smaller here. And in fact, if you compare the two side by side, you can tell it's quite a bit smaller, but I think that the lesson sheet still works really well. It gives you a good idea about how much space on the mug the pattern will take up so you can get an idea how close to the handle you want it to be or how close to the opposite side of the of the handle wherever you want to put it and I just kind of get that pretty close to the lip here. If it's going to be a side that the person is going to be drinking from then you may want to lower this down a little bit more because you I recommend not having the artwork go all the way up against the lip, especially in the side that the people are going to drink from. But um, I'll let you be the judge on how close to the lip you want to get that. And let's see. And since I'm actually going to improvise here and do the uh, white mug, I'm going to do black paint just because it's going to be easier to see when I mark it. But like I said, I... You want to use whatever color you're going to be using on the center dot. And I think that's, sorry if I was out of frame there for a second, uh, that's pretty darn close, I think. Now this is going to flip up right now while I dip the paint, but as long as I don't let this slide around, we should be just fine. And there I got just a little bit of, a little bit of paint on there. Fold that back down. I'm going to hold it with the hand I'm going to be dotting with. And... It looks like it's still good, so I'm going to mark that center. And it's not very big. It's right there, but that's plenty big, I think, you know, as far as uh, just so you know where your, where your center is to mark your center dot. Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, this video, and if you... Uh, want to give these baby wipes a try, I highly recommend them. It doesn't matter. As far as the brand, I've only, I bought this brand because it was the least expensive I could find. They had the plastic container. Um, I don't think you need anything high end. I think they're all going to work wonderful. And I believe you can find them at the dollar store too. I think this container here with 80 wipes um, was less than $2. And, uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this and I have some more videos coming up very soon. My next one actually is going to be on how to clean up your mistakes. I'm going to be showing what I do when I have a, a mistake that I need to uh, remove. And it's going to be a little bit different depending on if it's on something hard like a tile versus a canvas. So until next time, rock on.